गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स वंस अगेन द फाउंडेशन फॉर इकोलॉजिकल वेलफेयर इज विथ यू विथ इट सीरीज इकोलॉजिकल वेलफेयर बाय यूथ और वी कैन से यूथ फॉर इकोलॉजिकल वेलफेयर फ्रेंड्स टुडे इज वर्ल्ड एनवायरमेंट डे फिफ्थ जून and it's a very very important day for all of us especially for all those who are interested in environment uh, and uh, all the plants and animals sharing environment with us and especially for those who care for this environment uh, every year uh, there is one uh, central theme to celebrate the world environment day and uh, for 2022 the central theme to celebrate the world environment day is Uh, the only one earth and uh, this only one earth is unique and beautiful uh, because of its biodiversity including birds uh, birds make this earth beautiful not just by um, their uh, beautiful colors but also by their calls and melodious songs there is a, a poem by henry longfellow uh, which relates to bird songs what is that uh, think every morning when the sun peeps through the dim leaf lattice windows of the grove how jubilant the happy birds renew their old melodious madrigals of love the awakening continents from shore to shore somewhere the birds are singing ever more so such a nice poem about bird calls and uh, bird songs uh this is our episode 3 uh, in the series youth for ecological welfare the first two episodes were very very interesting one was uh, on bird migration and the second one was on insects and this third episode will be even more interesting and very unique it is about uh, bird acoustics bird calls and i mean uh, bioacoustics bird calls and songs uh for some people these terms uh like bioacoustics or mn acoustics uh they are they are uh, expo- they have exposure to that those terms but for some of us it might be new and that is why we have invited a young researcher uh whose thrust area is bioacoustics okay he is mr viral joshi uh viral joshi is currently working as a project associate on long term ecological observatories for climate change it is abbreviated as lteo he is working at uh, the very prestigious indian institute of science education and research which is abbreviated as icer uh, and he is working uh, in uh, uh, icer tirupati his interests are avian acoustics bioacoustics ecology and animal behavior for his research he is studying song variations of uh, white bellied sholakili uh, in palani hills landscapes this species belongs to a group of beautiful passerine songbirds endemic to uh, western ghats india he is also using autonomous recorder units to look at patterns of avian communities in the same palani hills landscape he is interested in different types of vocal behaviors especially vo- vocal mimicry alarm call and duet songs uh he is interested in understanding this complex behaviors with an ecological and conservation oriented perspectives he has visited different landscapes throughout india and recorded variety of wild sound wildlife sounds he started recording bird sounds in 2009 and since then he has recorded sounds of nearly half the avian species that are found in the indian subcontinent that's uh, 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 amazing awesome so um uh without taking much of uh, your time uh we would uh, start conversation with uh, viral uh viral my first question uh, is uh, about your web page shola sky island on that you have provided your brief profile and in that you have mentioned for me birding is all about a call and that is very interesting and uh, blatant statement i would say can you tell our viewers why have you said that uh, uh, the for me birding is all, uh, all about calls because 
I am also interested in birds, but I am, you know, usually attracted by the colors and plumage, and I always look through, uh, look to the birds through glasses, through binoculars, pairs of binoculars. But why are you emphasizing uh, their calls? Can you share with our uh, viewers? Sure. Thank you very much, Dr. Ketan Bhattu, inviting me Welcome. here. Welcome. Uh, uh, so I'm I'm just answering you one of your first question. So basically. Uh, Uh, the whole nature is beautiful birds are beautiful snakes are beautiful even the insects are beautiful and trees are beautiful but uh, for specifically for the birds they are also beautiful and they also make really beautiful sound as well so uh, i i i still remember when i was a uh, very young I, i most probably must have seen the first bird uh, is definitely house sparrow and uh, in in gujarat specifically in our area saurashtra where the child is even just barely about to start talking but the people start asking him like how how sparrow make the sound and that is like a chi so that that even the from the even from the very young age like people know how bird uh, make the sound and like so people are encouraging the uh, their kids to uh, like behave like how the, uh, the the sparrow is making the sound and it's called chi like that means yeah, chi is the famous, sound yes. of the house sparrow so basically uh, right now in uh, uh, current era where we have a lots of information about birds so now we have the uh, earlier we have a books we have the books and where only the sound has been only described as a like okay this species uh, make call like e or something similar to that but now we also have the pdfs where you can also listen the sound and we have a lots of like more advanced uh, information than earlier so i think the call is the main thing like you 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 can differentiate uh, between the species between the sub species even between the individual just using the call so oh i think for me uh, bird song uh, song is just a uh, main thing so uh i mean you can just close your eye and still you can tell how many birds are around your uh, like where you are just right uh, standing in your forest you can even tell without looking at bird uh, what bird species is that and you can also tell lots of about lots of other thing just behavior like uh, what kind of calls they are making and what can be a presumably behavior right now that bird is doing just without even look at it so for me the call is just everything that's great that's great um viral when i i was reading about uh, this uh, calls of uh, animals and especially birds i came across a term called bioacoustics so uh, what is that i mean uh, can you elaborate on that term because for the benefit of the viewers bioacoustics sure sure so bioacoustic is a term where it's a interdisciplinary uh, uh, you know it's just interdisciplinary branch of the science where people study ecology uh, including the all animal and taxa and they also include the acoustic like their uh, vocalization so okay. like the, this all together it's called bioacoustic so it's not only about bird it's also about the insect it's also about the bats it's also about the fish maybe frogs also, also. about the circulation yes. and frogs all kind of the taxa and now okay. uh, there there is another term called ecoacoustic so in okay. ecoacoustic you don't uh, actually study only one particular taxa but you study the whole environmental sound so oh, very imagine, interesting uh in one place uh you actually listen the uh, that place sound like you go just imagine if you go into the uh, let's say uh, western ghat you know yes. how it sounds like versus you go to the himalayas versus you go to the right uh, right rajasthan or somewhere in desert okay okay yeah please yeah yeah so uh, that is all about uh, bioacoustics or uh, uh, it includes bird acoustics also uh, viral when i was young you know when i was a child i i was fascinated by you know story in children magazine that there was a king who was going from one village to another village on horseback in his kingdom and when he was tired he uh, he slept under a tree huge tree and while while taking rest he heard a male and female bird on the branch in the same tree and that king was 
uh, able to understand bird language and that's why he could uh, understand that these male and female birds were telling each other that this king is fool he is just sleeping but he doesn't know that his enemy king is coming towards his kingdom to attack on his kingdom and conquering his kingdom so uh, from the childhood i am amazed by this term called bird language do they have language actually uh, i often see you know common miners facing each other and you know um, uh, producing a variety of calls and bobbing their heads and making other many gestures so there is definitely they have some communication uh, uh, technique i would say uh, but do they have bird language is there anything like bird language or it is just a myth yeah yeah sure so uh, uh, i would like to say uh, so earlier like uh, i am really fascinated about the earlier research or whatever the history we have with the environment like we okay. have lots of painting we also have a lots of other information as well so but the the the, ta- the that time we have a certain limit with uh, our uh, uh, let's say analysis or like information what we have like we don't have a broader information uh, lots of things are restricted the travel sorts are restricted and uh, things like that so we have uh, even the that kind of era we still have a uh, lots of information from the birds like we know in our lo- in, in lots of the folk tales and history uh, people have described the how birds sounds like like the how okay. pipe cuckoo uh, is associated with the rain and uh, uh, yes. like in, uh, in our gujarat we have a uh, uh, one bird called common ayora so yes uh, in saurashtra uh, so if you go there are th- there is really one famous name bachu so okay. uh, whenever the common ayora make a sound uh, it's like a it's asking a question like bachu kya gyo so oh, that okay. means it's asking where where is the bachu then we have a red wattle okay. lapping uh, the, the lapping sound is also described in such a like you know the uh, slightly bad anthro- like slightly anthropocentric and like uh, did you do it okay. so that that's like sounds like a red wattle lapping then we right, have a panther right. frank calling or back frank calling which asking the question similar way so even at okay. that time of the time uh people also have a try to you know like quantify it. let's say definitely I mean, definitely like but now yes. we have a really advanced technology in terms of okay. the uh like we we can actually analyze the each single beat of the sound and uh, okay. uh, so those called the dialects just like the our human language uh, okay. let's suppose uh you you know uh, in gujarat it's a very famous it's a, people say bar gave boli badlai like if you go yes, if you cross yes, the yes, 12 yes. village uh, the the sound of the dialects will be a it it, it, of it the changes system. yeah yeah so it's it's very similar in the bird world as well because that there, there is lots of uh, things are happening in bird world bird world as well oh. like there is a geographical variation uh there is a okay. population variation let's uh, okay. imagine like if there is a population sir distributed in some different areas they might yes. don't have connectivity they da- they might don't have a genetic connectivity as well the acoustic connectivity in terms of the dialect sharing or the song sharing so that okay. the, the the research has been done long back in the many places in even in the india as well so we can um, say birds have a the language but not as uh, we interpret as a our right, language, right, but right. They, definitely they have, have their own language, language. yeah, yeah. uh uh viral uh, which are the different types of calls that birds produce you know that is yeah, uh, yeah. so uh, uh just like for the uh, uh so the communication is a really important key for Definitely. all of the species uh Definitely. like the uh, species can communicate a various way there is a okay. visual there is a visual uh, there is a sense and smell there is also auditory there is also display and lots of things are involved like for you yes. so human we have a lots of facial expression we also have a lots of gesture and th- things like that so in the Definitely. bird world uh, th- there there is a lots of thing so uh, i i'll try to just explain some of the few basic uh, like the uh, definition for the call uh, okay. and we, we can uh, again continue with the for the more information so basically uh, when when we say bird song and bird call so these are the common two things are uh, right now uh, known in like uh, 
as a, as a information so, like this, this, so what is the difference between the two bird call and bird song yeah. so the call is basically uh, very simple it will be a for communication purpose only but uh, versus songs are really complex it has a multiple uh, uh, intention uh, not only for the communication but as well definitely so the song can be a for the territory defense song can be a for okay. the mate attraction or song okay. can be a for the many other reason as well so so just okay. simply put uh, in this way songs are complex and calls are simple So okay that okay way, this is the uh, two thing a part of the song and call uh, the in the call we also have a lots of other uh, varieties so we have the begging call we have the alarm call we also have a mimicry as well uh, in the birds so okay. these are also uh, basic uh, uh, type of the sound bird produce right right um uh, i have come across a term called song bird Yeah. so what is that means um, are the are means do they mean to say all the melodious uh, birds like uh, our coel indian coel or some some others uh, all those birds which are producing very melodious call are they called song birds or is, it is some it has some uh, other scientific meaning so the uh, in bird world the uh, species are defined in the lots of categories like subosine and osine uh and then we have the song bird uh, so that is also one of the category but uh, uh all of the bird make a song for like for our category most of the bird make a song but i think uh, for uh, the melodious part as you mentioned uh, uh lots of the bird who make a really beautiful song we have actually like uh, categorized them as a song bird for the but i think the terms are uh, different for the uh if, if we go to the systematic taxonomy but uh, in general like for the uh, layman and saying like the song birds are like the birds who make a really uh, pretty song but uh, somewhere the, somewhere, I mean, somewhere somewhere i read that uh, all the passerines are song birds but then when i think that even crow is passerine so i won't i, I would not be uh, encouraged to say that crow is a song bird you know yeah, so, yeah. so and so, i think in U, in usa Uh, there is whole list of songbirds but yeah, yeah. does that kind of list exist for india means uh, i am really confused about this so it, it's a it's a it's a little bit of tricky because uh, okay. uh, we, we can't uh, just you know the categorize uh, species or taxonomy like uh, just okay. based on the song because we have to look at the lots of other thing like which other family they are belong right, and things right. like that but so as you mentioned the crow uh, crow can also sing so they also have a song so okay. uh but mostly uh as as i uh, uh you know like just a little bit simplify the species uh the family uh, of the songbird where there is a fly catchers uh, there is a lots of uh, other warblers okay. which make a melodious maybe song thr- maybe thrushes thrushes yeah, are thrushes, also songbird chats okay. they are also uh, songbird okay. but i mean okay. uh, it's it's you know like the category is like slightly different from like uh, in taxonomy term right uh one question is uh, you know it arises in my mind that um, the term bird watching is very very famous you know and uh, the people who are watching birds they are called bird watchers but then why uh, there is uh, uh, why the term bird listening is not that popular you know because just like bird watching bird listening is also important as you are saying yeah. so that term is really rarely used you know bird listening so uh, any comment about that so so i or, it, or I mean, is it implicit in bird watching so i mean uh, uh, i i i don't know the detail category like that way because okay. uh, the, in the even the within the birding world uh, there are lots of categories for the you know uh, who has uh, seen the lots of species who only yeah, wanted to see particular yes. species who are only was the bird with using binocular and like you know there is a different way so i'm i'm not certain for the category but uh, i yes. think uh, listening bird uh it's as similar as a watching bird uh yes, but definitely. uh if you listen the bird it's really easy and quicker to find the bird because okay. uh, sometimes they are like just imagine you are in the somewhere in the marshland where okay. your uh, your your vision is very limited like you you have a bare right. like some uh, 10 meter 10 meter or let's say 5 meter vision but there are yes. lots of bird inside the marsh so you know there are lots of bird but you can't okay. see but you yes. can listen easily 
so i agree i, mean, I agree the yes listening bird is uh, i mean le- we can start this term <laughs> definitely <laughs> and it's definitely help to see and uh, you know enjoy more bird as well right right and uh, viral there are lots of uh, bird field guides in the market and uh, uh, they are useful in identifying birds uh, using visual clues so are there such things available in the market by using which you can just identify bird by just listening to them are there any uh, apps about uh, bird bird calls something i think uh, since your young age you have recorded so many uh, bird calls and songs so uh, is such thing available in the market suppose i i i, I am not interested in bird book but i am i am wanting to identify birds using bird calls only so is there any app available in the market or something uh, else uh, yeah yeah so there, there there are lots of option right now as you mentioned and this has happened within like past few years only because the technology is getting really rapid advanced okay so mm-hmm. uh, in future there will be a definitely possibility where you don't have to you know uh, if you don't know the call that's a totally fine you just record the call and uh, artificial at- intelligence will definitely uh, help you uh, understand what species is that and that is Great. going to be a really soon uh, uh, available for the lots of people it's already available in us and lots of uh, other places but uh, okay. it's it's a, it's a uh, in india as well like the uh, i think the uh, cornell lab of the ornithology has a developed a few uh, uh, okay. software there there is a merlin app is available which already okay. uh, available uh, like it partially identify some of the species uh, but i mean still there, there is also still need to lots of uh, uh, we need to develop because uh, we still need a, lo- a lots of data from the uh, like th- this field because Uh, lots of the species we don't have a much information about that species and that's okay. a really crucial part to develop such a you know system where you can just record a call and you can ab- able to identify the species okay uh, once i came across one website called zenocanto is that useful for our uh, uh, birders yeah definitely so uh, this these are the website called archival or database or la- library website there are few website available Uh, Zenocanto is one of the website where uh, people across the globe, not only from okay. the India or not from the one continent, but uh, just say if you go somewhere like someday in Japan and you have recorded some call, uh, you can easily upload that call either on okay. Zenocanto. You can also upload the call in the Macquarie Library, which is also a- another database recently rapidly growing, and uh, okay. there are also few other option available. but zenocanto and the uh, ebird is uh, one of the largest uh, data set yeah. right now for the global uh, bird data set i, I can say bird call i think you yourself set. i think you yourself have uh, 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 uploaded many bird calls on zenocanto yeah yeah likely yeah yeah and uh, one more question viral is that uh, what kind of uh, gadgets or equipments available for recording the bird calls or bird songs can you explain that sure sure so right now uh, so l- let's let's divide the gadget into the basic versus advanced versus middle like okay. somewhere in middle so okay. let's say uh, you you just have a started uh, bird watching uh, and exploring the nature but uh, you, you are really interested into the call so how you can start let's say let's start okay. with that so uh, let's say you have a definitely right now even if the any person about the uh, definitely i'm saying more but let's say uh, 20 year age definitely has a okay. smartphone and okay. each smartphone has a recording uh, a recorder inbuilt in the smartphone so that is a okay. basic start in earlier phone like uh, I, i remember i i used to record call in the phone and uh, okay. now the uh, the technology is already rapid faster growing technology we have a like you can search and you will get a thousand app which will oh. help you to record call which also help you to like you know basical some ba- ba- basic features uh, including the you know like you can do basic editing and things like that so that that thing is available for the basic purpose uh, there okay. are few recorders uh, basic recorders available uh, in budget uh, which don't have a you know like uh, very specific uh, 
uh, features like you, you you can't do lots of thing with the recorder, but definitely okay. you can record the call. Uh, the, the, the lots of recorders are available, and those okay. are really big recorder. So then okay. we have a uh, like slightly little bit ahead uh, than the basic. So uh, if you wanted to record a call, definitely you need a one digital recorder, uh, okay. which uh, can also record a call and which can also uh, uh, store those recordings in that uh, uh, in the memory. Okay. Okay. So this is the again the digital recorder which has. But if you wanted to uh, record uh, specifically some focus uh, recording, let's say okay. uh, you wanted to record particular uh, source or particular bird, then there there are shotgun microphone which is a specifically okay. made to record uh, you know from one direction. It's a unidirection microphone uh, which okay. will help you to record specifically call. It will. slightly you know uh, cut down the surrounded call okay uh, but you uh, i mean not everything but uh, still the the those microphones are really sensitive so okay. uh, which is also useful and then we have a you know slightly ahead so this is also even research grade and normally people are using so the set will be a uh, you definitely need a microphone you definitely need one digital recorder you definitely need a earphone because you okay. also wanted to know uh, what you are recording because oh. i mean i have made a lots of mistake and i'm definitely sure like i have a lost so many recording because i was not wearing the headphone uh, oh. like sometime you know like you are just uh, uh, you, you are on the field and the nature is crazy like sometime uh, you you get some unexpected bird very close to you which is you are waiting for so many years and yes. in you know like in that uh, rumbling you just about to forget the uh, wearing the headphone and you realize you you have pressed yeah. the button but yeah. you have pressed some wrong button so my the oh. recorder is on but uh, it's not recording <laughs> so, oh my so god okay this, this some of the mistake uh, uh, can be uh, uh, you know and also uh, that can is also uh, help to you know focus your recording like uh, okay this uh, just imagine you are somewhere in the himalaya the where canopy is really high so you okay. don't know the from where sound is coming so for our human hearing perspective you can actually look at because we have a two ear we can actually yes. uh, uh, direct the you know uh, triangulate the sound and we know where is the source but when you yeah. use the recorder uh, with the microphone you actually need to direct the sound like from where the sound is coming so wearing okay. the headphone will actually help so this okay. is generally uh, people even researcher also has this kit uh, it's it's a shotgun microphone digital recorder and headphone okay. so this is a basic kit so this now if you go a little bit of the advance uh, then you uh, so then in the market uh, uh, it's it's a uh, you need a one more uh, additional uh, equipment which called parabola dish so okay. which is a a uh, slightly larger dish it larger be, okay yeah, yeah it can be a varied it look like a you know uh, 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 small dish. small dish antenna okay yeah small dish uh, basically dish it look like a dish tv antenna dish tv antenna yes the, yes uh, okay on the uh, dish uh, so okay. it, so that this actually help to focus the sound in one part right. Uh, right place inside that dish and where your microphone is situated so basically okay. you are amplifying the sound uh, right and you are actually from from the environment the sound. Yeah. yeah from yeah. the environment and yes. also another thing uh, if you are using this uh, parabola dish you are yes. actually uh, cutting out the background sound which uh, okay. coming from the behind you because the microphone is actually focus on the one particular side so okay. this is generally people use uh, uh, specifically to record you know like one particular individual not all but one particular focus individual this is used for the lots of research purpose and lots of uh, recording purpose as well so these are three, right, right. Uh, things right now uh, you can use to record bird call but i would okay. even suggest you can start with the mobile mobile also has a, a really amazing microphone because uh, like so right now the even the basic microphone so sorry basic uh, digital recorder cost you let's say 3000 rupees to 10000 uh, rupees but your okay. phone will cost you more than 25000 rupees 
so yeah. just imagine like uh, right now i i think we have the devices uh, in our hand we can start with the uh, mobile okay. as well okay viral what is uh, handheld recording and passive acoustic recording and uh, what are the pros and cons of these methods yeah so uh, basically uh, uh, i I'll, i'll say little bit in the research term so uh, handheld recording where you actually focus on one particular species or one particular target uh, where uh, you just record a call for like let's say some certain time let's say you wanted to record some 10 song of that bird or tens uh, multiple individual so handheld recording where you actually you are present in the place you are in you you, you actually controlling the all device and uh, like let's say if you wanted to record the song you can click the button you can start recording so mostly yeah. uh, that is a handheld recording system versus a uh, passive acoustic recording system is a uh, where uh, uh, right now uh, uh, we have with uh, thank of the uh, uh, technology we have the recorders which can operate remotely and uh, oh. like l- just like uh, uh, use uh, you Uh, it's a small box you can put the batteries inside you can schedule the recording and you can leave this recorder in the forest for uh, depend the uh, how like depend on your what you wanted to do but basically is, for it, certain years you can also oh. keep this recorder uh, right now there are recorder which can actually power by solar panel and it can be there oh. for the years you just have to go rec- you just have to go collect the uh, Uh, data and uh, little bit ahead of this uh, uh, right now there are also few recorders uh, you need a little bit uh, in prox- pro- proximity to closer somewhere uh, uh, electricity but you can actually get the live recording from the recorder so basically you go you put the recorder and you just get a data from those recorder uh, either it can be a wireless also or it can be also wired so these are the two different methods where people use like just suppose uh, uh, the people who actually study the whale and dolphin uh, okay. they just leave the recorder in sea for let's say 6 month or years or maybe more than years uh, and they just keep recording whatever the schedule time uh, which has uh, uh, given to or set the recorders now oh. the pro and con for this recorder is like a basically if the if you are recording with a handle recorder uh you yeah. are focusing on the particular species uh okay. you might miss out the uh, all other thing which is in the, happening in the background let's say if okay. there is a, some species calling from your behind uh which is a little bit far uh if it is uh, not in the recorder uh like uh, like a certain distance uh you okay. can't even record with the your microphone or you can you can't even record with the uh, recorders uh with the passive acoustic recorder uh, i mean it's really great tool but it's also come with the lots of uh, uh, post processing where you uh, once you like let's say okay uh, you put the recorder for the 6 month and it will okay. recording the uh, all environmental sound for 24 hours for 6 month okay. that means when you have to analyze this data yes 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 a lot of processing it will be required it's a lot yeah. of processing so uh, there there are like benefits and there are also cons as well but now thankfully we have some of the uh, uh, technology where uh, people are using autonomous algorithm to uh, you yeah. know like using the also detectors to pick out certain vocalization of the insects okay. whatever they okay. wanted to uh, uh, if they are working on some particular species uh, yes, they can make yes, the yes. classifier using let, let's say they uh, they they take a 10 really good recording from the handle method and okay train with this 10 rec- good recording yeah. to pick yeah. out the call from the autonomous recorder so right in, right right one sense is actually both uh, techniques are useful but yes, uh, let's yes. say uh, let's for the handle recording uh, it's a limitation uh, for the person because you can't be there uh, in forest yeah. for hours because oh, it's a long time yes and it's a really yes. exhausting also but uh, the yes. other way the re- autonomous recorders are really gro- good in, in okay. that way okay. and it's also passive like if you are okay. there with your target species your present might also affect the behavior of that species 
Versus oh yes, yes. The recorder is actually deployed there. Nobody knows where is the recorder, and everything yes. is going uh, the so, way in the, is going in the nature. So, so that is more realistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. it is in the both way. Yeah, But, very uh, interesting. Yeah. yeah, these are the really tools, uh, really useful okay. tools. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Viral, I have come across two another terms. One is sonogram and one is oscillogram. Yeah. So, can you enlighten us about that? What is sonogram and what is oscillogram? Sure, sure. So, let's assume you recorded some call, uh, uh, but with a uh, just with that audio clip, you play with your computer, you can listen the call, but uh, okay. uh, you actually miss out lots of things. So, spectrograph and oscillograph are actually the method where you can see that sound. Like you okay. can measure particular, uh, the, you you can actually uh, see that video in two oh, okay. uh, special okay. way where you have a. We can see some patterns. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so okay. in the x-axis you have the uh, frequency, y-axis you have the time. So now okay. that that okay. audio, you you have the frequency, you also have a loudness, and you also yes. have a time. And, time. Uh, yes. Yes. With this uh, with the spectrograph, you can actually. See the call in little bit in the like you know the 3D way where you can actually see how the patterns you know like the the louder calls are brighter the higher frequency are upper the lower frequency are the lower uh, in oscillogram uh, it's not possible to see frequency because uh, uh, it, it, it's the it's the way it's oscillogram is work it's actually you can see the peaks where the louder okay. calls are there. So okay. uh, both of things are little bit different, but uh, mm -hmm. mostly in a uh, uh, like let's suppose if you are working on let's say cricket or insect, which actually make okay. very high frequency sound and loud call. Yes, uh, you can see uh, even the frogs are also in that uh, way. Right, uh, in, in right. That category, you can use the oscillograph and you can see the peak and you can literally you know like see the pattern there in the oscillogram. Uh, same okay. thing with the spectrograph as well, but uh, in spectrograph, no, you can actually you know uh, see little bit more. Let's say uh, if you are working on the birds, the okay. calls are really varied. So okay. if, let's say if the species has a really complex song, it has a uh, lots of information there. Let's say even okay. within the one second of the frame, there might yeah. be a more than a, uh, let's say ten different sound. Oh, okay. In different frequency, in different okay. loudness. So that thing, if you wanted to measure, you can use a spectrograph. You can extract the lots of parameters. Let's say higher frequency, lower frequency, mean frequency. What is the time? What is the distance okay. within those notes? So okay. that is you can also extract and you can analyze Great. that call. So these okay. are some of the uh, tools uh, uh, people use when they study the uh, animal vocalization. Okay, and. Uh, Uh, can you enlighten our viewers about uh, current research going on in India about bird acoustic? I have come across your couple of papers uh, with some term terms like spectrogram cross relation and song yeah. richness index. I think I yeah. came across two of your papers. So in yeah. that way, uh, what kind of research is going on in India? Yeah. So uh, uh, if we uh, use the bioacoustic, it's really recent science. Like uh, okay. uh, it's it's and it's also rapidly growing. So there is a lots of new information is also coming. There are also these new methods are coming. Uh, there is also new technology also coming the same way. So okay. uh, like you have you really have to keep it up with the lots of research happening uh, within this field. Uh, okay. Also in, in India recently, lots of people have started uh, uh, use uh, kind of, like studying okay. the bioacoustic. Like lots of okay. students are using the bioacoustic tool as an important research. Uh, lots, even the uh, forest officials are also using the bioacoustic okay. for many purposes. But okay. but uh, it's like you know it's a little bit broader. So now people okay. are uh, using uh, let's say uh, specifically study one species. So uh, they just use a one species uh, uh, recording and you know uh, do their uh, research with that one particular species. Okay. Let's say people, if people are doing little bit different uh, things, let's say they wanted to do understand abundance or richness or like how the bird community there, 
they also okay. use uh, you know arus let's say uh, I, I, so i i was looking for a different uh, bird community in the uh, western ghat landscape so we okay. put recorders in the different places to see how many species are there so that is just a uh, specifically for the birds and uh, there are more than now uh, only if uh, i wanted to see like how the habitat is changing or like how yeah. one particular uh, either environmental variable or the anthropogenic variable let's say uh, okay. natural calamities or uh, uh, let's say some anthropogenic pressure uh okay because of that how the birds or particular taxa is reacting you can actually okay. use uh, uh, this recorder to uh, study you know uh, how how changes are happening in the spatial ways yes. and uh, uh, in little bit finer ways as well so okay. now this is really good time as well because uh, this new tech and uh, younger generation also really family with the lots of uh, new information like there is a uh, lots of coding and uh, uh, okay. related things also there so uh, there are lots of opportunity and this can be a really uh, use for the conservation perspective as well let's say if yes. your target species is actually critically endangered or uh, let's say uh, uh, it's also need really uh, conservation you know uh, it's need conservation attention as well so yes. uh, what is a basic question so let's say if you go one certain uh, habitat first thing you wanted to understand is that species is present or not so that is a one okay. basic question so yes. uh, let's say if that species is vocalized uh, then uh, let's say if you are studying owl okay so owls are nocturnal it's really yeah. difficult to see those birds in the right uh, right daylight. they will be somewhere hiding but nocturnal yes. uh, you can't even see in night so let's say yes. but they are they are vocalizing in the particular time so right right say, uh, if you wanted to study uh, in that in that particular manner uh, you can use the recorders you can deploy the recorders or you can re- record the call one particular uh, depend on your methodology yes and yes. you can study that kind of you know like so it's uh, using this tools uh, it will make research little bit uh, easy as well and yes, so yes. aspect like a uh, uh, urban like you, you you can estimate the species density you can see if the species are present or not so there is a lots of information uh, and th- 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 there is lots of possibilities also there right right this right. uh, uh, bioacoustic as a important conservation tool yes yes actually i was about to ask you the uh, usefulness of this bioacoustic in conservation but you have already answered that yeah um we're a last uh, question rather not question but a request what is your message to young people about uh, bird research in general and then uh, research on avian acoustics in particular so yeah. there may be a lot of young people watching this uh, interview attending this interview so kindly give some message to them yeah sure sure so uh, one of the really privilege if you are in the india like india has a lots of biodiversity hotspot that means yes. there is a lots of work need to be done uh, there is a lots of conservation and research is also uh, really need in this particular area because right now there is lots of uh, crisis is going on there is like let's say let put the human crisis on the side there is a climate right. change which is also we are going to affect us but uh, there is a lot of things are going on deforestation is also going on so uh, using some of these really new tools it's really great opportunity it will make a uh, lots of uh, 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 you know the process faster in okay. many ways so uh, I, i think the, uh, and this is also really great time as well because uh i mean i mean you might know uh, very well dr ketanda to like long yeah. back how the research is going on and the current scenario yes. is uh, <laughs> uh like you know the collecting the data into the sheet and then like again then there is a you put a data into the computer but now things are really fast <laughs> you can collect the data in your phone and you can even the on spot you can analyze the data so okay uh, this is a great time like we, we and this is also new uh, in I, i would like to say in many way it's a new uh, 
you know, uh, uh, new uh, for, for really new for the science and conservation as well. Right. Because uh, right. uh, there is lots of uh, information are coming and it's it's continuously growing. So definitely, okay. uh, if you are uh, using some of this really uh, interesting tool, that's yeah. going to be a really great tool. Let's say if you are not planning to use full fledged. But you can also put some of the small proportion of the uh, uh, this bioacoustic part in your study or uh, like whatever project. Uh, it yeah. definitely give you more insight uh, uh, from whatever uh, you are studying. I'm just curious: is a lot of statistics involved in this um, data analysis and all those things? Uh, definitely, <laughs> there is a lot okay. of. Uh, uh statistics yeah, so young involved. so young yeah. youngsters should be prepared for uh, advanced statistics also yeah. if they yeah yeah definitely so a- as i mentioned the earlier like so the, the like uh, let's say you collect uh, limited data versus you have opportunity to collect uh, everything so you definitely try for the everything but uh, you collect everything then you are actually you know like so uh, little bit uh, overloaded with the additional data so right. like whenever you uh, uh, you plan for anything you make sure you pr- plan properly your method and uh, your logistic and uh, then the analysis part will come later so yeah. uh, definitely there is a lots of analysis work is also involved in this and uh, right. uh, but the, thankfully now we also have lots of software and uh, you know lots of okay. scripts which yes. also make a uh, lots of uh, uh, this analysis process little bit faster as well. Faster so, also, yes. Uh, there are challenges, but there are also uh, solutions. Solutions yeah. as well. So yes, both of these yes. are uh, available. I agree. So Viral, uh, thank you very much uh, because yeah. this is a new topic and you have really given very interesting information and useful information. So I hope that uh, young people watching this interview will learn a lot from uh, Viral's uh, interview. And uh, once again, thanks a lot, Viral. Goodbye. Yeah. Th- thank you, Dr. Katan Tatu. Okay. And th- thank you, thank Christian, you. as well, for making the logistic. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay.